Anytime you make a mod, a map or even your own game, you will have to take screenshots to show your work. Taking bad screenshots might make people not give your work a chance. Alternatively, maybe you want to record some video footage while having some form of control of what's happening in the game. There's a few console commands that we can use for both of these scenarios. I separated the video into chapters, should you want to find a specific thing you want to do. Let's start with the basics. You will need to have the in-game console enabled, which you probably already have. In case you don't know how to do that, the setting is somewhere inside the game's option menu. You can also add dash console to the launch settings to make the game boot up with the console already open. You will also need to enable sfcheats1, because most commands are cheats. And before you ask, using cheat commands that the game is shipped with cannot VAC ban you. I get this question a lot. All the console commands I'll be mentioning will be written into the description, so you can just copy-paste one after another into your game. One or two of the commands I'll be mentioning are specifically only for Left 4 Dead 2, because that is just the game I mod the most. Anyways, let's begin. Hiding the heads-up display and your held weapon. The simplest commands make the biggest difference. Binding keys to the commands R draw VGUI and R draw view model will toggle the HUD and your weapon respectively. Binding keys is done by using the in-game console writing out the following command. Bind toggle key R draw VGUI. And for the view model, R draw view model. Hiding the HUD hides all the displays, even the pause menu and the console. So, be sure to actually bind toggle it, not just binding it. The difference between bind and bind toggle is that bind only makes one thing happen. Let's say you bind SF cheats 1. You press the key and cheats turn on. You press it again and cheats remain on. But if you bind toggle SF cheats, pressing the button turns cheats on and off. You can use the command unbind followed by the key to remove that key bind. If you want to be extra fancy, you could modify the game to just add these commands to your actual key bind menu like I did in Left 4 Dead 2. But just using the console is less work and, dare I say, easier. Handling bots Sometimes you want to take a picture of a player model in a specific spot, or at least stopping them from moving around while you're trying to line up a screenshot. There are a couple of commands that can help you do just that. You can bind toggle NB stop to stop the bots from moving. You can literally swap who you are playing as by using the command SB take control, at least in Left 4 Dead 2. Should they be pointing at the wrong direction, you can bind the command bot mimic to make all bots do the exact same thing you do. Jump, shoot, reload, swapping weapons and even turning around. Using SP Take Control, Bot Mimic and NB Stop, you can quite literally puppeteer all the bots to do whatever you want, wherever you want. Slowing down time. You can make the game run slower. This would allow you to take a good timed screenshot of an explosion, or the muscle flash, or any other event that takes precise timing. The command host timescale does just that. Bring up the console and enter host timescale 0.5 to make the game run half as fast. 
You can make it easier by binding this to a key, like the page forward and page back buttons on your mouse, using this command. Bind mouse for toggle hosts timescale 0.11. This toggles between full speed and 10% game speed. You can also make it go faster. That's very useful for when you are impatient with some kind of timed event, or if you just want to no clip a little bit faster without changing the no clip speed. Just don't go above 100 because the game gets really unstable at that point. Before and after shots. Source Engine games have a command that lets you remember the exact location of where you are in the world along with where you are looking at. Simply bring up the console and write out the command get pos exact. This will spew out a line of text reading your exact current position. Copy this line of text into a text editor just to not lose it. Now you can close the game load whatever mod you want, then load the map again and paste this string into the console and the game will teleport you into the correct spot. Manipulating entities on the map Antfire allows you to trigger any relay, fire any output and even alter the settings of an entity. Like this video of me playing with the helicopter. All I'm doing is firing the relay that would call the helicopter and then I fire the relay that would send the helicopter away again. To use the ENT FIRE command, you will need to know the name of the entities present on the map and all the inputs and outputs they have. And that means you will need to decompile the map, open it in Hammer and then figure out what to do from there. As an example, Dead air has a long finale where you gotta wait for the plane to fill up. If you look at the map in Hammer, you can see which entity fires the output to make the plane move. And that entity can be altered. In this case, it's the trigger finale entity. Your game and your entities will have different inputs, so you'll have to figure that part out yourself. To continue this example, open the console. Begin the end fire command, target the required entity and give the input you want. You can also make an alias for this exact string and bind the alias to a key without having to pause the game and open the console during gameplay. If you want the alias to be remembered, you will have to fire a CFG file before the game even launches. And that can be done by opening the launch settings, adding plus exec, then the name of your CFG file, and then have the alias in that CFG file. Changing no clip speed. Should you want a slow panning shot for a video, you can use the SF no clip speed command followed by the speed as a number. If you want to be really fancy, bind any key to increment var SF no clip speed 0 0.5 10 0 0.5. The first number is the minimum allowed no clipping speed. The second number is the maximum allowed no clipping speed. The third number is the amount that each key press will alter your no clipping speed by. Pressing the key will now make your no clip speed advance upwards in increments of 0.5. If you want to slow it down, you will need a second key bind where the last value is minus 0.5. And with this, we reached the end of the video. 
If you found this video useful, do whatever the other YouTubers keep telling us to do before their videos even begin, what with the like button and such. Take care and until next time. Bye. Thank you.